the authenticity of the Hunter Biden emails obtained by the New York Post remains a hotly contested issue in the mainstream media. However, there's not much room for criticism when access is obtained for an account directly engaging with the son of the Democratic candidate. That's exactly what happened over the weekend when Hunter's former business partner, Devin Archer, agreed to turn over access to his email account to a select group of journalists, including our very own Jack Posobiec, who joins us now. So, Jack, I want you to lay out the scene a little bit about how this information came to light, because when a lot of people talk about the New York Post articles, for example, they say, well, you know what, the inception of this information is a little bit sketchy, and they use that to discredit the other findings. So I want you to explain how this information came to light. Yeah, Alex, thanks so much for having me on to talk about this. So to be clear, one of Hunter's former business associates, a guy by the name of Bevan Cooney, is now behind bars. He's being held in a federal facility over involvement in another scam that involved tribal bonds. Uh, this was something where Hunter Biden and Devin Archer both skated on. Well, Bevan Cooney decided that he was a little upset that he was sort of the fall guy for this scandal. And in that, decided that he wanted to turn over what he knew. He wanted to come clean, essentially, to expose what his former business partners had been doing all along. He then came forward and through, uh, through some intermediaries was able to get in touch with Matthew Tierman, who then got in touch with me. He's someone I've had on for a long time. He's an investigative journalist who worked with Peter Schweitzer. Uh, we then flew to Chicago and he was able to show us logging in directly to the Gmail account of Bevan Cooney, this former associate, uh, all of the emails. And as you just mentioned, uh, there's some questions about what, how exactly Hunter Biden's laptop came into the possession of Rudy Giuliani. Well, all of these emails are still hosted on Google's server themselves. They're from the Gmail account. I mean, that's fascinating right there because that is indisputable to that point. I mean, you, the, you have the documents right there. And in fact, I've seen that you've been posting them from your uh, Twitter account as well. I'd advise everybody to follow you on that front because I've seen that there's been selective information coming out so far as it's been verified, of course, by both you and Matthew. So I think that there's tangible evidence that a lot of people can get their hands on really off the bat. But when it comes down to this as well, I've noticed that there's a lot of conversations about multiple business dealings, not only with, uh, for example, Russian individuals, not only Chinese individuals, I mean, it seems to be an international enterprise that's taking place here. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Matt had a line that he used, so I'll repeat it. He called it the United Nations of Corruption. We saw Russia, Ukraine, China, and now Kazakhstan is coming into the mix. Essentially, what they were doing, Alex, was going through these various uh, disreputable foreign interests and going to them hat in hand saying, look, we can get you in to the United States banking system. Come with us. We've got Hunter Biden. They refer to it in one of their emails as the Biden lift. In another email that was just released this afternoon, they talk about having a direct pipeline to the Obama administration. This was something that these foreign oligarchs couldn't get through any other financial firm or lobbying firm, that direct line to the vice president's son. They were using his last name essentially as a form of currency to curry favor and financial interests around the world with these oligarchs who couldn't really get into the U.S. financial system through any other means. And you bring up right there, too, the idea that uh, he was called a pipeline, a direct line to, to uh, some members of the administration. And in fact, in those same emails, they said that Hunter Biden's access to the administration was a, quote, currency. That's the word that they were willing to use on that front. And I thought it was really interesting, too, while going through some of these emails, uh, another figure that surfaces as well. I mean, you name the two business partners, you name Hunter Biden as well, but the Heinz name seemed to show up. And in fact, it looked like this was a whole separate uh, operation seemingly by these individuals as well. And that is John Kerry's godson, I believe. Is that correct? It's, it's, well, it's John Kerry's uh, stepson. stepson. So Chris Hines is the son of former Pennsylvania Senator John Hines, uh, who passed away. Uh, his mother, Teresa Hines, then remarried. And when she, when she did, she remarried John Kennedy, John Kerry, excuse me. And so Chris Hines has been sort of along for the ride in terms of this. However, what's very interesting is that as you go through the emails, you find that Chris Hines was becoming 
more and more skittish as their operations grew larger and larger. And right as Hunter and Devin Archer joined the Burisma board there in 2014, after the, the Ukraine government is falling apart, uh, Crimea is seeing, the, of course, the Russian annexation. That's when Chris Hines says, guys, I'm out. I don't want any more part in this. I don't like what you're doing. He then reaches out to people. And again, his, uh, his father at that point, keep in mind, or excuse me, his stepfather, John Kerry was Secretary of State at that point. He reaches out to the State Department and says, I want to make it clear that I'm no longer involved with Hunter Biden and Devin Archer. So that right there, just the fact that Chris Hines was already, towards the end of 2013, getting those cold feet about what was going on, shows you that he knew that there was impropriety to these dealings. Right. I mean, it's kind of almost uh, trust the person's conduct more than what they say. If he's not comfortable being involved in this type of business dealing, it should kind of shed light on how other people are feeling about it and really the legitimacy of it. But we talked earlier in this segment about how a lot of people are trying to discredit, for example, the New York Post findings saying, how do we know it's not Russian disinformation? We even heard Representative Adam Schiff say on Monday that he believed that the New York Post was a Russian disinformation campaign, only to be completely rebuked later in the day by DNA, DNI John Ratcliffe who said there is no intelligence whatsoever that suggests that. So let me ask you this. How do we know that this isn't Russian disinformation? Well, the way that we know is that these emails, as I said, are still hosted on the Google server in the Gmail account of Bevan Cooney. So unless the Russians have found a way to penetrate someone's Gmail account, host it on the Google servers and implant documents up there, tens of thousands of documents going back over a period of about a decade to include uh, personal emails, emails, and that's the reason that, by the way, that we're only releasing select ones here because there's a lot of personal emails, family emails, uh, his, his wife emails. So uh, there's no way that that would be done. Even if this were a hack, they would have been taken off of the server. They're still on Google's servers. Right, and I think the mere fact that, I mean, one of Hunter's former business partners gave you access to it, I mean, that's a testament within itself that this isn't hacked materials or anything like that. I mean, as you're saying, it's right there for him to access if he wanted to, but he since signed a waiver saying that uh, you and other investigative journalists can look into it as well. So what comes next in this saga? I know that, for example, when we talk about the New York Post, uh, they are saying that that information was turned over to the FBI for further investigation. Uh, but when it comes to this as well, uh, is this something to where we are going to see more information over the coming days? Is this something that you think other actors should act upon? Maybe lawmakers, anything like that to investigate deeply? Uh, do, what happens next in this whole type of saga? Yeah, that's right. Well, I can say, I can confirm that I have sent this information to contacts at the Department of Treasury and the Department of Homeland Security. I've also socialized it with the White House and members of Capitol Hill. Uh, what they tend to do with it next is going to be in their court. But I will say that they're certainly very interested in looking into the bottom of all of this. The president, of course, has called for a special prosecutor to investigate what exactly was going on with uh, Biden, Inc., as I suppose some people are starting to call it, and to understand basically that this is the type of financial dealings that Donald Trump and his family were accused of for years. And we were told again and again that it existed, and yet no investigation was ever able to verify those accusations. Here, we have the evidence first, so we are going to follow that evidence, and we are going to follow it where it, where it leads us and use that fact-based investigation rather than making an accusation first and then asking for evidence later. And this might be one of those situations where critics of the president have set the precedent for a type of investigation to exist. I mean, it wasn't too long ago where the special counsel investigation was launched on far flimsier information that we now look back on as discredited information to launch a three-year investigation, $20 million, however long it costs. So I think that the precedent is set there now for perhaps there to be greater scrutiny when it comes to Hunter Biden and his father Joe Biden from what we've seen as well. But once again, I want to tell our viewers that they can see all of your reporting, not only on the One America news broadcast, but we also upload them to the YouTube page as well. But I would also say just follow Jack because that's a closer way to get more up to the date information on what's going on. Jack Basobic, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Thank you for coming on tonight. Take care, buddy. Talk to you later.